Welcome back to Whiskey Wars. My name is Sean, and tonight we will be reviewing the other black label, Evan Williams. So here's some things you can impress your friends with, or yourself, or whoever you like to impress, or actually they probably won't be impressed at all because you'll be drinking whiskey and no one will care. But here's some facts anyway. So the current Evan Williams Distillery that is now in downtown Louisville in what is called Whiskey Row is actually almost right across from the original distillery that Evan Williams started back in 1789. Now, besides starting this distillery, Evan Williams was also a stonemason and the local wharf master. Being a wharf master, this allowed Evan Williams to purchase a very large still, which then enabled him to start his distillery. Now, Prohibition ended the distillery that was Evan Williams, and they were having troubles before that anyway. But after Prohibition, a lot of investors uh, found out about this Evan Williams whiskey brand. They purchased that as well as many other whiskeys that would become what is now Heaven Hill. Uh, the issue was, though, is that none of these investors knew anything about whiskey. They were just businessmen. So because of this, they hired people from Jim Beam, the Jim Beam family. And Earl Beam became the first master distiller at what is now Heaven Hill. So, now that we know the history, let's see what's in this bottle. Now, a lot of you folks are probably familiar with this. Oh yeah. It's a pretty popular whiskey, one of the top selling in the world. Actually, the country, so. And let's give this thing a smell. Man, that is, that is nice. Getting a little bit of sour oak, but not real bad. It's kind of nice in this, in this situation. Nice brown sugars, sweetness, caramel for sure. Hints of cinnamon and baking spices but it's a really prominent nose. I mean, you don't have to really search for this. I mean, just, just lightly sniffing the glass and it's just really nice, very uh, dessert smelling. Uh, you can imagine uh, if you were kind of sniffing uh, like, like a caramel sundae, that's what we're sniffing here. Cause you do get that vanilla, very nice nose. So now let's uh, give this thing a taste. I think this bottle was $23 at Kroger. It's about the same anywhere else as well, but Kroger tends to be the cheapest, so if you didn't know that already and you're into buying whiskey, go to Kroger. Yeah, so for $23, you get a 1.75 liter bottle of whiskey. And this is, I mean, for the, that price, this is a good whiskey. It's not, a mid shelf or a top shelf, or it couldn't compete with those. But for a bottom shelf whiskey, which is what this is, this is a good whiskey. And uh, so I've talked about in the past how some low proof whiskeys, and this is, I think it's, what is it? 86 proof. Some of those still tend to kind of punch above their weight as far as alcohol burn wise. This does not do that at all. Um, it's very smooth, uh, I mean, just goes down real easy, but it's not flat on the palate. It's much thicker, much more mouthfeel than you're getting out of some other cheap whiskeys. 
And for flavors, uh, you're getting everything that you smell on the nose. You get the sour oak, but, it, but it's not overwhelming. You get caramel, you get brown sugar, you're getting hints of cinnamon, uh, definitely other baking spices coming in there, uh, definitely getting the vanilla, uh, and it's a very nice creamy, yeah, I mean, this is really hard to beat in the budget category. Uh, let's give it another taste here, see what else we can get. Um, maybe a little, like, kind of roasted nuts, maybe, on the kind of the back of the palate, like, if you ever had a roasted peanut, um, it's kind of a little bit like that, like a nice sweet roasted peanut on, on the back of the finish. And then at the very back of the finish, so I kind of worded that wrong. Anyway, uh, at the very back of the finish, you do get a little bit of that sour oak note, um, but again, it's not overwhelming. It's still kind of pleasant, just kind of a difference in flavor from the sweet uh, palate. Yeah, all in all, um, you know, this is not my favorite whiskey by any means, but uh, if you're looking for a good budget daily drinker, Evan Williams is really hard to beat. Let's give this thing one more sip here. That's just nice. Um, you know, now in fairness, it, you can taste that it's, it's younger, but for that price range, um, there's maybe a couple other bottles that are this quality for that price. Um, so if you're newer in whiskey and you're just kind of figuring out, you know, what's gonna be my daily drinker? What do I wanna try that's fairly cheap? I strongly suggest getting this. And, you know, maybe start with a smaller bottle if you're not sure. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this glass here. And remember that you can never have too much good whiskey.